Kadima Natashev, uh, Mr. Shana Davin, uh, as you know. Um, now, this particular uh, batch of uh, lessons are aimed at uh, parents of young children. Uh, and it could be parents of young children who are preschool uh, or at a nursery school, as Gilliga, or who are, are at a Gale school. But more generally as well, all our parents can use it too. So it's really for any parent who wants to use Irish with their children. Um, and I, the, the fun following my site that I'm doing on YouTube, we will have, we'll continue with the overall grammar lessons in Irish, which will build your overall uh, ability and understanding of the structure of the language. And I would encourage parents to look at those lessons as well, because you'll get a better understanding even of some of the stuff here that we will look at today. Uh, but uh, that said, I also want to focus on particular language for particular people and as I say this will be Irish for parents um, and there will be other sections as well as we move along but for now uh, we'll just keep it for this here anyway. Um, so basically anyway uh, I put the word out there and I asked a lot of parents. Uh, I have raised my own children through Irish so I had some experience myself. I have two girls, one 19 and the other 15, and I've only ever used Irish with them. They have only ever really spoken Irish to me. Uh, English is all around them, other parts of the family and all, but we've had this between us and it sort of worked well. But if you're not fluent, you, there are still a lot of things you can do. Every time you use Irish in the home with your child, it's probably more important than a lot of other places where Irish could use. Uh, um, and as well as that, the child learns that it's not just something, that Irish language is something that's living and something that takes place outside the school and outside uh, that sort of uh, educational environment as such. So you never underestimate, no matter how little you would use, never underestimate the importance of it. And the beauty of, I suppose, using Irish with your children is that at the end of the day, you're not going to be uh, discussing complicated political matters with them or anything. Um, I mean, some of the conversation will just be one step up from grunts, uh, although at teenage years they go back into grunts. Uh, so basically, you're not looking at complicated conversation. And the other beauty about it is you'll use the things, even in English, you probably, I would say, if you listen to what you say to your children, uh, 500 words would probably get you through a good part of most days. So you find yourself repeating the same things over and over and over. And that is one of the advantages for somebody like yourselves, maybe learning Irish. You get the chance to experiment on your children. You will be saying the same things over and over every day, uh, as you do in English anyway. And the language uh, structure and the language level that you're using is not the most complicated, uh, especially for very, very young children, okay? Uh, so that are the advantages. So use those advantages uh, if you are learning Irish, okay? Um, right, okay, let's, we'll just, this but the first lesson we'll deal with uh, waking them up in the morning, getting them out of bed, maybe getting their clothes on uh, and a few things around time and stuff like that. We're not going to go into the breakfast and the car and the mode of transport and homework and all that carry on. We'll get to that later. Now we're just uh, dealing with that initial part of the morning whenever you sort of wake up, okay? Or before you wake up or you're about to wake up, okay? So, wakening them up. This is, we'll just look at some um, possible things you can use there. I will say, if you find some of the phrases a little complicated, just leave them for now. Maybe take a note of them, try them out and try them out. But focus on the ones that you can say first and the ones you do find useful. And if there's one or two wee complicated phrases to say, Park them for now, don't let them vex you. Uh, and you can park them and come back to them later and use them then whenever you're comfortable with them, okay? And maybe if you do the grammar lessons as well and build up your ability uh, with some of the longer sentences, okay? So first of all, just the simple thing to get them eyelids open in the morning. You go on in the morning and they're lying there sleeping. So the first thing that you wanna do is just say to them, wake up, okay? So there's, several, there's two words for wake up. Uh, the first word is muscle, muscle, okay, muscle, which is probably the standard Irish with the fada on there. I will say I'm more not, I'm more comfortable myself saying muscle, muscle, okay. I don't use the moo sound; it's more a mu. So I say muscle, and a lot I got that from a lot of Ulster speakers who do also use that sound. But any one of those two is fine. 
muscle, muscle, okay? Um, one wee thing about Aries, I suppose, if you're, that's only works, that's the order form, uh, if you, you'll get that from your grammar lessons, but that's the order form, that's telling somebody to do something, uh, muscle or muscle, but that's only to tell one person. If you have two children to wake up or more, then you must use the plural ending. You're sort of saying, and this one you're saying you waking up, and then this one you're sort of saying you's waking up. So the plural, if you want to give an order to more than one child, and you'll find that repeating itself in a lot of orders and you get used to it, right? If you have more than one child to get out of bed and you're giving a general gulder about the house, um, muskligi, muskligi. So muskligi, muskligi. Uh, and again, uh, the alternative nostril is muskligi, muskligi. So muskligi, muskligi, okay? So uh, muscle, muskligi, okay? So that's probably the most common way up in Ulster. Uh, so you just go to the room and say, muscle, muscle, uh, and wake up, wake up, okay? There is another word uh, used in Irish, very common as well. Um, I don't use it myself, but it's out there and you have to be aware of it as well. It also means wake up and it's douchey. Douche, douchey, okay, douchey, right, uh, and that's another good word, okay, douchey, uh, and I don't mind what you use. Now again, that's only for a singular person. I didn't put in the plural spelling, but again, you would do the same thing. You would say douchey, douchey, okay. So you've got muscle or muscligy, or you've got douchey and douchey. Practice those. Go in tomorrow morning and every morning, if you're waking them up, just say muscle. Muscle, muscle, if you have to shake them to get an eyelid open, okay? So that's just generally wake up, which is not quite get out of bed yet. You're still only at the stage of maybe trying to get uh, one eyelid open, okay? Uh, I'll just have a wee sip of coffee here. I keep my, uh, <coughs> my talking machine lubricated. Uh, if you want to add in the word anish, it gives a wee bit more rhythm to it or whatever, you know. Muscle anish. Anish means now. Anish, anish. So muscle anish, and the emphasis goes in the second part of that word, not in the first part. So muscle anish, muscle anish. Uh, and then if it's more than one child you're sh shouting to, muskligi anish, muskligi. Right, I'm just saying it naturally then. Muskligi, muskligi. Muskligi anish, muskligi anish. Wake up now, wake up now. Uh, usually this is said on a blind panic in the morning, you know. Um, and if you want to sort of say, um, I suppose I'll, go down, I'll skip one, I'll go down to this here because we're sort of on the same thing. Um, muscle, who, heen. Okay, so who, heen, or to heen you will all sometimes hear as well. That's normally said with a hit sound even though it looks like fein. So uh, muscle, to heen, muscle, who, heen. Okay, muscle, who, heen, sort of wake up yourself. Wake up, wake yourself up. Come on, wake yourself up. Muscle, who, heen. Muscle who hen and again it, it's a wee bit sometimes we just say muscle it's a wee bit bare so this here gives you something a wee bit extra muscle who hen okay and somebody asked me how do you say wakey 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 and I haven't for the life I have not got a clue how you'd say wakey 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 in Irish and I suppose it's a good way of pointing out you know each language has its own way of doing things and sometimes you just can't replicate it exactly in another language and I'm, I, I could be wrong on that but that would be my own view you sort of look around for something but I wouldn't see any problem with, with uh, at all with saying no just running the word after no oh, muscle 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 uh, there's no problem with that wakey 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 okay I'll give you the same type of effect just say it several times as naturally as you can okay uh, and then uh, we'll go back, um, oh, I suppose we'll just keep on this here, uh, I'll actually go back up to this here uh, towards the end, it's probably in the wrong place on this particular list. Um, if you want to, uh, from the grammar lessons, will to is are you, will to, uh, and then musculature or musculture, but I'm going to say musculture, will to musculture, are you awake, will to musculture, are you awake, right? And if they say ta, they're awake. If they say Neil, they're telling you lies because they're trying to say they're not awake, okay? So if they say ta, it means yes. Anytime you ask the question and will to, the answer is always going to be our ta for yes and Neil for no, okay? Well, to muscle, and this here at the end of this, I said a little bit, you see the T-E stuck on it? So well, to muscle, 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 muscle,
are you weakened? Ch, right? Well, to muscle ch, uh, well, to muscle ch, okay, and any of those the two ways of doing it. Are you awake? Yes and no, okay? So you can just go in there and uh, ask that as well. Sometimes they'll be hiding underneath the blankets and you're never too sure. Um, if you were going to use the douchey, uh, there's a different way of saying are you uh, awake. I've noticed that, see, wake means, uh, just in English too, you can see the difference. Awake means you're in the state of being awake. Whereas wake is actually telling somebody to wake up. In that case, the order, you know, you have no A, the letter A at the start of it. So that's your order form in English. And that's the state that you're currently in. Uh, it's not an order. So, well, to muscle to. Uh, if you were going to go down the route of using the douchey, um, and you wanted to say, are you awake? Well, it's a wee bit of a unique word. And what you actually say in Irish, if you're using this one, but you can stick to that there, so there's no bother. I'm just giving varieties because... I do want to incorporate the different dialects and I want to give, you will see different things in school books as well and want you to be able to recognise them if you see it. Um, but if you take for example this here as you're actually really saying, are you in your state of awakeness, right? Are you in your state of awakeness, right? So are you in your uh, awakened condition, okay? And it just means, are you awake, right? I'm only a wee bit of high fluting and fancy what I'm doing here, but I'm trying to give you the structure. Um, and this here, again, I said, uh, do, uh, do, but it said so fast, right? And it's just, and then this DH was a, a DH followed by was, was a U or an A or an O. U, A and O are three broad vowels. And a DH followed by any of those gets a sound that you do not do in English. So you're going to have to practice it a wee bit. There is no easy way to get it, but it becomes easy. Believe me, because I, I, I had difficulty with it. But basically, it's almost like garage. It's like the G, to get your very rough position, uh, it's like the, the G in the word garage. Garage in English, G, see that G? The only thing is, you're stopping the air there in the word garage, g, and then you're sort of you're stopping it. It builds up for a split second, and then you release it very quickly, g, and you get that g sound. You sort of do something similar with exact same place, garage, but in actual fact, you let the air continue through the whole time. So instead of g, you say g, g, right, g. You do close it a wee bit, but you still allow the air to come through, right, and. I want, if you're a learner, just accept, after a while, this makes perfect sense and it, it, it makes the language run, you know. So don't be afraid of it. Uh, someone once told me, and I don't know, something along the lines that there were only something roughly about 44 sounds or something in English. And there were 67 sounds in Irish or something like that. I don't know how accurate that is, but there probably are more sounds in, in Irish. Uh, so therefore you have to get used to them. This is one of them. So, right? Right? I know I'm really emphasizing it on naturally there, but I'm trying to just get that sound for you. Now, let's say that you were going to say that just natural, then I'll try to take it down natural. Right? So you don't want to be over laboring it, but you might have to labor it to get it initially. So, and you'd hardly hear this on. If you were saying it slow again, you would say on will too. But we know, just in open speech, you just might hear the ah, or very quickly skip past it. Will to. Will to. And then you sort of go, will to in the gushacht. Will to, and just let this along. In the gushacht, but so quickly. Will to the gushacht. Will to the gushacht. The you father nearly swallows that wee eye up. Will to the gushacht. You're nearly going straight into, will to the gushacht. Okay? And that would sound natural. Will to the gushacht. Are you awake? Are you in your state of waking? Because the question is will to, the answer again will be either ta for yes and nil if they're telling lies, which means no. Okay? Are you awake? Will to the gushacht. Okay, so practice that. Um, and then <clears throat> sometimes, you know, you're sort of backing this up or you can sort of say, uh, it is tashe, tashe, in am, it's in time. It is in time for what? To wake up. There's no way at the end of it this time. It is in time to wake up. This means to wake up. Or you could use that form. It is in time it is time to wake up. You've a choice between any of these words, right? So I'll say tashe, tashe, tashe anam, and it gets this just this tashian 
runs together like Tashe in, but it comes Tashian. Tashianam. Tashianam. So the slow down is Tashe in. In full fluency, it'll be Tashian. Tashianam. Tashianam muscles. It is time to wake up. Tashianam muscles. Tashianam muscles. Okay, or Tashinam Muskilch, if you want to use the Ufara sound as it is there in Standard Irish, although I tend to use it as if there was no Fara there, which would be that Muskilch sound. Tashinam Muskilch, Tashinam Muskilch, okay, Tashinam Muskilch, okay. And you could go for the other option, Tashinam Dushacht, Tashinam Dushacht, okay, Tashinam Dushacht. And this CHT gets a wee good guttural sound, Dushacht, Acht, Acht. Acht, okay, and I know I'm emphasizing them, but I'm doing this because there I know that people will be watching these with very, very little Irish. Uh, okay, some people may have got Irish at school and feel that I'm over emphasizing some of these pronunciations uh, because they are aware of them. Where I'm from, I can assure you, a lot of people have been denied Irish at school. So basically, I want to try and do some of these uh, fundamental sounds that people may not be familiar with. So, duschacht, uh, okay. So Tashinam Dushacht Dush And you'll notice that a fara mu du a u fara gets an u sound u okay so muskilt dushacht okay tashinam muskilt and you try and make it as natural as possible then you know obviously I'm overemphasizing so tashinam muskilt tashinam muskilt if you go the route that I want or tashinam dushacht right some people see these wee differences and they go on to sort of hysterics about the different dialects and all that. You know, there's no need for it. Uh, it's There's a few wee differences and things, but they do repeat themselves and there's no, it's not as catastrophic. Uh, it, it, some people talk, you'd nearly think there was a Berlin Wall between every dialect, you know, and it's not like that at all. There are some differences in pronunciation and some words, you know, different uses in different areas, you know. But if I hear somebody saying Duschacht, I know exactly what they're saying. Probably what you want to try and aim for, uh, uh, most of the ones I say will be Ulster based. If you sort of aim to make your mouth sort of uh, go roughly along the lines of one dialect, but try and get your ears to go along the lines of three dialects. That's the way I would sort of operate it. The, your ears need to be a wee bit more uh, tr maybe be, 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 uh, trilingual in terms of dialects, uh, but your mouth only has to be, be able to speak the one version, okay? Um, and if you're then... A lot of times you're sort of saying, wake up, and I don't know what words is used for your wains, right? I wouldn't be a big man myself now for all these wee pet names or anything. Um, but they are common enough, you know, there's people out there now with, with uh, the used pet names for children. So some things you can say to your children if you want to use an affectionate name, okay? Um, a store, a store, right? This wee ah uh, is never you're addressing somebody. You use, it's called the bucket of ah. Uh, uh, you're using your voice to address somebody. So if somebody, you say a store, you know you're being spoken to, okay? But if the person directly says it to you. Um, so a store, and that's sort of just, a store means like um, treasure or store or uh, something valuable, okay? And the same with uh, this word here. Uh, the word is tashke. Although in, in also Irish, whenever you put it in the vodka, it was sort of slightly a bit different. A hashki, a hashki. Very, very close to the hash key on your computer, okay? If you were looking for something. So, Donegal speakers tend to say that, that but at the end, with an I-D-H in the, in, the, in, the, in the vocative. So, it, it sounds like an E sound. So, a hash key, a hash key, a hash key, right? So, uh, that's a lovely word and you'll hear it used in Ulster Irish a lot, you know. So, muscle and it's a hash key. Wake up now, uh, darling, or treasure, or wee pet, right? Musculinish a hashki, okay? Um, okay. Uh, Muscle who he in a hashki. Waking up now, waking yourself up now, uh, we pet, or douchey in a hashki. So you mix these in here uh, with the ones you want, okay? That will be, I would sort of say that's a very, very common one, okay? This one here, a chri, a chri, right? You've sort of got to sound, a chri, okay? Chri is your heart. So you're sort of saying, my heart, but don't think too much of the English, but that's what they're literally saying. But it's really a term of endearment and affection that you would use for, for children. Okay? A chree. Oh, muscle and a chree. Muscle and a chree. Wake up now, pet. Okay? And this is just generally here. If you're, Pwashti is the word for, Pwashti is the word for children. Uh, and if you wanted to address them, 
wake up now children so we know that if there's more than one we go muskligi muskligi and then we go muskligi anish wake up now muskligi anish afwashti so it's the uh, same as the english you get a sort of f sound with your ph afwashti afwashti okay afwashti afwashti if you're speaking to them afwashti okay muskligi anish afwashti it would be wrong to say muskligi anish pwashti uh, because whenever you say pwashti, you're not actually speaking to them. You can say the word pwashti, but that just means children. But you can't say it. If you want to speak to them directly, you must put a ah in front of it. And then you must put a, a, put a wee hitch on then and it softens it down. And that's known as the vocative a, ah, the addressing, the a ah to address people directly. Uh, and it's not something you do in English, but you definitely do it uh, in, in Irish. A pwashti. Some people... Uh, a lot of learners sort of skip this, you know, and it's not, it really should be kept in the language. It shouldn't be let, you know, sort of drop, you know. Um, so hopefully it'll do me a favour and say a flashy, but not flashy, okay? Um, right, okay, so that's wakening them up. Uh, we'll see what the next uh, page is. Right, getting them out of bed now, right? The next, the next mission after you've got the eyelids opened, uh, we'll try and get them out of bed now. So get up, eerie, eerie, okay, so eerie, eerie and ish, uh, get up now, and again, if you're speaking to more than one person, eerie, eerie, get up or rise up, okay, or get up, right, out of the bed, eerie and ish, uh, and that's because you're speaking to more than one person, get up now, eerie and ish, um, it can mean, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the 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 word for the Easter rising is iriamach, the rising out, iriamach, and that's coming from that word there. So the Easter rising, iriamach nakaska. So iri means to get up or to rise up. Okay. So irigi anish, get up now. Okay. Uh, so any of those two to just go and say muskal irigi uh, muskal iri anish. Okay. Uh, wake up, get up now. Okay. You could if you just want to say get out. Uh, no, if you're over sort of near the bed and you're sort of you're just a wee bit stern and sharp, okay? You can just go for the two words at each end here. Amach yat. Amach means out. Amach and yat means with you. Out with you. Out with you. Right? Get out of the bed. Amach yat. You can use that as well if you're throwing somebody out of a bar, if you're in that position. Uh, or you're throwing them out of your house, <laughs> okay? Or putting somebody out of your garden, right? Uh, so, amach yat. Amach yat, Okay? Uh, out with you, in other words, get out, okay? If you want to sort of say, get out of that bed, you put that in the middle then. As means out of, amach means out, and we'll say this here means off. And then, if you ever want to say that, something in Irish, you always put on to this side of the word, and shin at the far side. On yabashin, that bed. On chayershin, that chair. On rewardashin, that computer. So you sort of have on at one side and shin at the other. Whereas in English you just have the word that in front of it. But in Irish you surround it with these two words, okay? So in this case you sort of say, Asa yabashin. Asa, as, and you don't hear the N there at all. Asa, asa yabba. It just run flows like that. Asa yabashin. Shin is the pronunciation here. Shin. So, Amaha sa yabashin. Amaha sa yabashin. Yat. Uh, get out of that bed with you. Amaha sa yabashan yat, get out of that bed with you. With you, okay? So amach as a yabashan yat, but get it to flow. Amaha sa yabashan yat, okay? Amaha sa yabashan yat. And you know, once you get that there for bed, you can tell people to get out of a whole lot of other places as well, right? So learning these phrases might be specific to a parent. Uh, with it getting a child out of bed in the morning, but at the same time, whenever you learn these phrases and learn them fluent, you will be able to adapt them in other contexts as well for different situations. Sometimes uh, you might want, and this way of learnt means now, but sometimes you want to be particularly stern and you know, you're sort of saying, that's it, the negotiations are all over here, folks. It's now time to uh, act. So you're doing the sergeant major stuff here, so you go, and this jirach, and this Jirach, j, j, jirach, anish jirach, and jirach means right, direct, now directly, in other words, right now, no messing, right? So if you say that, anish jirach, 
You can soften it down a wee bit if you like. Lay the hull. Lay le do hull. Le le do hull. Lay the hull, please, with your consent, right? With your consent. In other words, please. Uh, that was softened a bit, but this is more stern. And now she's jeerig. Uh, lay the hull. Lay the hull. Yeah, and if you say, no, I would do that a couple of times in the way, and you don't want, lay the hull. Lay the hull. Uh, please, please, you know, right? So don't be, just get natural and if you want to say it several times, say it. Uh, if you're sort of begging them, you know. Uh, another way, now we've said, an eerie just means get up, you know. But you can, you can also say, see in Irish, uh, id means in your sitting position. And that would have been used to say to get up, you know. Uh, and again, probably, I don't know, I'm just sort of guessing here. It might be connected to the time. There, there was no, there's no guarantee you had a bed. Getting up when you were up in a, a sitting position, you could have been lying anywhere. But in Irish you can say, get, uh, rise up into your sitting position, in your sitting, right? Uh, and that's a common enough thing to say. Or you can say to somebody, be in your sitting, right? Be in your sitting, okay? So you can say, rise up into your sitting, or be in your sitting, right? So let's see how you would say it. Now it sounds strange in English, but it's perfectly natural to say this in Irish, okay? So, iri. Uh, iri da he, and you just hardly hear that eye at all. Iri da he, so that's the, all you hear here is the hitch he. Iri da he, a hitch sort of cancels out the s. Iri da he, sort of right. Iri da he, iri da he, get up into your sitting position, or you just say be the he, be the he. Slow down, be a da he, but nobody would ever say that. Be the he, be the he. Iri da he, get up. And somebody says to me, how do you say rise and shine? I suppose the thing, the problem with that is like, the, 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 this is like really a sort of a, uh, there's a bit of a poetry involved here for want of a better word, uh, rise and shine. And so it doesn't really work. You can't get, if you try to get rise and you try to get shine, it wouldn't really work in Irish. But that there would be sort of close. Well, be at the heat, be at the heat. Get up now and sit, get into a sitting position and rise and shine sort of thing. Okay. Be at the he. Um... Probably a lost cause using the next phrase, uh, but uh, I suppose, uh, and I know I must have phrased out in the last one, but I'll have to go back at the very, at the very end. Um, there's several ways of saying make the bed. You don't actually use the word make, Jan, as normally means make, but that would sort of mean maybe sort of hammering and putting nails in and making the bed up, maybe. And it's not normally used for making the bed up. It, might, it could be used out there, I don't know. But the, the normal thing is to sort of recommend this, either of these words here. Rachi means to arrange or sort out. Kori means to arrange. You can do that with your hair or the bed or the table. Uh, if you're setting a table for dinner and stuff. Uh, Sukri means to sort out again and arrange. So any of these three words and then the bed. Make the bed. Mod, make the bed. So, Rechi, Rechi, on Yaba, on Yaba. Rechi and Yaba, on Yaba. Rechi and Yaba, make the bed. Cory, Cory, Cory and Yaba, right? Cory and Yaba, make the bed. And then, if you want to give an order using Sukri, Sukri and Yaba. Sukri and Yaba, right? Sukri and Yaba. So, Rechi and Yaba, Cory and Yaba. Sukri and Yaba, okay? And you'll notice that I-G-H always sounds like an E sound in Irish, almost. Rechi, Sukri, and Kori. Or some dialects would sound that G a wee bit soft at the end, so you might get Rechi, uh, Kori, and Sukri, okay? Uh, they would have a wee bit of a G there at the end of it, uh, but not up in, in Ulster, okay? Um, and then the same way, uh, for example, that... It the he means sitting, means up. And if you have some Irish and you think of the word, there's two words you might think of meaning up. Say, suus means up and huus means up. I would recommend strongly not to use those for saying, are you up? No, don't don't say that. And will to suus. Okay? Suus is, is used for going upstairs and making actions in an upward direction and stuff like that. And huus means that you're already up in a higher level. It doesn't really mean up out of bed. Okay, so just be careful with it. I would say maybe some people do use it, even good speakers, but I'm sort of recommending strongly to avoid that. Uh, and just because you say up in English 
doesn't mean you look for the two words that mean up in Irish and use them. Don't don't do it. If you want to say up, use at the he. Okay. Um, now I want to at the lie. Are you in your lying position? In other means in your bed. Are you lying? So it's the opposite of at the he. Will to at the lie go for I so will to are you? It will to are you? And anybody who hasn't a clue what this and will to is. I would strongly recommend you go to the grammar lessons that, that are also available in tutorials and that will help you with some of the structures that we're given here. So will to are you in the lie, lying or in bed, go foil still. Will to the lie go foil. Uh, and again, the answer you want to hear to that is Neil, no. Uh, if you hear ta, yes, then you might have to storm up the stairs, okay? Uh, and then you might want to say to them, are you up yet? And that's what the point I was making, right? Don't use who is or sue us. Will to are you at the he in your sitting? Go foil. Will to the he go foil? Are you up yet? Um, and again, ta for yes, nail for no. Don't be surprised if the child, even though the child could be re reasonably fluent in Irish and the Kubera Gael school, don't be surprised if they think it's strange you're saying to them, are you at the he in, in a sitting position? Because remember, they're not getting up at school. It's not a it's not a phrase that they would use at school, and they might think it's strange because they might use the the phrase "em or he" for sitting at a at the table at school, and they might f even say that you're wrong for saying "and well to the he." What are you talking about, mommy? Am I in my sitting? I mean, I'm I'm in bed, or I want to get up out of bed. They might find it strange that you would use that in that context. But that's again, that's because it's not something that they would be familiar with, a familiar use with this phrase at school. But I'm saying use it and explain to them then, no, that is what's not normally done in Irish. You normally say, are you sitting up in bed? In other words, are you up out of bed? Are you, are you not no longer lying, you know? Well, to the he go foil, are you up yet? Are you up yet? Are you sitting yet? Okay. Ta, Neil. If you just want to sort of make a statement to them, it's time to get up. Or it's time for you to get up, right? Tashe, it is. In am, in time, in other words, it's time. Agat, at you, in other words, for you, I suppose, in this case. Eerie, eerie, to get up. That's to get up, eerie, right? Tashianam, agat eerie. Tashianam, tashianam, agat eerie. Tashianam, agat eerie. It's time uh, to get up. You can leave the agat out and just say, it's time, uh, sorry, it's time for you to get up. Agat is at you. It's time, it is in time at you to get up. Tashiana agat eri, it's time for you to get up. But if you left the agat out and just left out the for you, so therefore it's time to get up no matter who you are. Tashiana eri, you can just say it in the morning. Tashiana eri, Tashiana eri, it's time to get up. Tashiana eri, say it in long. Uh, that's my daughter ringing me. Uh, I would say that might not be the only ring I might get. <laughs> um, so, if you want to say, you will be late for school. Uh, from the grammar lesson, tattoo, it was R, you are. Uh, V2, you were. But B2, B2, that's pronounced B, B. B2, you will be. In other words, will be you. Okay? You will be be to mal mal eraskal. You will be late, and you t and even though you say for school, you sort of say on the school. So eraskal be to mal eraskal. You will be late for school. Be to mal eraskal. Right? You don't hear that in. Be to mal eraskal. Okay. If there's if there's more than one child, and you want to say use. And I already said I know there's no such word as use, but uh, here in Tyrone there's going to be. So you're speaking to more than one child. You replace two with shiv. Be shiv, shiv. Be shiv mal erin skal. Be shiv mal erin skal. You'll be late for school. Be shiv mal erin skal. You'll be late for school. Mom, tashi anam, tashi anam eri. Be to mal erin skal. It's time to get up. You'll be late for school. It's time to get up. You'll be late for school. Okay. So that's that lesson, okay? I want to go back because I missed a, a single phrase here in the first one. So I'm just going to do it. Uh, 
it's morning time. You, know, you sort of walk into the room and you shock the life out of them because they sort of think they've still hours and hours to sleep. And you just want to say, Ta on wedging, tan wedging on. The morning is in it. Tan wedging on. It's morning time. Ta on la on. There's the day in it. In other words, it's daytime. But again, I suppose think in terms of hey, it's morning. There's a new day out there, folks. There's a new day. What tan la on? It's no longer night time here. It's time for you to get up. So you can actually use that as well. Tan wedging on. Tan la on. Okay. Tan wedging on. Tan la on. And as I say, any ones you find a wee bit awkward, don't. Just learn the simple ones for now, okay? Um, getting them dressed, okay. Cur art, cur, cur means put. Art means on you. Cur art, do, do, not do or do or nothing like that there, just do. Chudge, and this here goes together, do chudge. It means your share. Cur art, do chudge. Put on you your share of clothes. Okay? Eddie. Eddie. Right? Cart the Hedj Eddie. And that da Hedj Eddie runs together. Right? And in, in Irish, in English, sorry, you just say your clothes. There's some phrases and words in Irish, uh, some nouns, actually, you sort of better saying your share of something. Hair is one, your share of hair, your share of clothes, uh, your share of money. There, and that wee word share is just throwing in, that wee word hudge is throwing in as part of it. So you're actually saying, put on you your share of clothes. And that's perfectly, and if you actually just try to say your clothes without the share in Irish, it would sound so wrong anyway. So you're better just using this. I'm just sort of breaking it down the sentence so you see what you're really saying. Uh, and if it sounds strange in English, it's not strange in Irish. So, karart de chajedi. Karart. Karart. Karart the chaj, the chaj, chaj. Karart the chajedi. Put on your clothes. Okay? And again, remember, if you're actually, that's only if you're telling one child to do it, because you're saying, put on you. But if you're saying, put, if you're telling more than one child to do something, you must use this wee agi ending, instead of, so you add it on to that, like the other ones previously. So you, instead of curry, you say, curigi. Curigi. Okay? Agi. Kurigi, and in this case you're saying on yous, put on yous, kurigi arav, kurigi arav, um, put on yous, and then your, see your, your singular is da, for one child, but your plural clothes, were, and it's just pronounced were, were, uh, sort of like w-u-r type sound, so just say it after me, kurigi arav, were, Gudge, this time that word puts a wee G on. Gudge, gudge. Were gudge, your share, plural. Your share, plural, of clothes, Eddie. Okay? Eddie. And if you learn this here, I don't want you to panic about this G and about this and that there. If you have two children that you're shouting at in the morning, use this. If you have one child you're dealing with, use that. If you have two children, sometimes you'll use that and sometimes you'll speak directly to one child, okay? Uh, if you have only one child, you'll probably find yourself using this all the time. You, have, you can avoid that for now, okay? So, Kurigi Arav, Kurigi Arav, we're good jedi. Kurigi Arav, we're good jedi. Come on, Kurigi. Irigi Anish, get up now. Irigi Anish, I was Kurigi Arav, we're good jedi. Put on your clothes. Kurigi Arav, we're good jedi, right? Kur Art, put on you, one person, I'm not going to go into the plural for them all. Da, that's for the wee da here, meaning your. Aja, Aja Skyla. Aja Skyla is school uniform. The uniform of the school. So, de, and you just say, Deja, uh, your just runs into the Aja for, for uniform. Karart the Aja Skyla. Karart the Aja Skyla, okay? Karart the Aja Skyla, okay? Uh, in the morning as well, there's always a big search for stuff, you know. And if you want to sort of say, where is something? The easy way, uh, the shortest way is just Kawal. And then you put whatever item is after it. Cowell. Okay? And that's said sometimes so fast people will actually say quill. Quill. So but cowell. Quill. Okay? Quill. Okay? You can also use this longer version, what place or where it is, and so kahatch. Kahatchawil. So it doesn't matter to me if you say kawil 
or Kahecha will. Your ear needs to know both. Your mouth just needs to say one of them. So if you want to pick the Kawil, do it. If you want to sort of get into the habit of saying Kahecha will, get into the habit of it. So Kawil, Kahecha will. You have your option. Kawil, Kahecha will. I would tend to use the Kahecha will a lot, okay? Um, and then if you're handing somebody something, uh, if you're handing something to somebody, Shaw Ditch. Shaw means this. Ditch to you. I suppose in English, here you are. Shaw Ditch. Shaw Ditch. Shaw Ditch. Up in Ulster, that Shaw, for some reason, got a wee hitch on it. And then the Ditch, after that, we, this O at the end, sort of got a D hitch then. And they, at that end of so you might hear somebody in Ulster saying, How itch? How itch? So if you hear that sound and somebody's handing you something, it's actually Shaw Ditch, right? How itch? Shaw ditch. I'm not sure if I'm even doing it 100% right myself because I don't tend to use it, but I'm very aware of it out there and I, I do recognize it right away whenever I hear it. How itch? Shaw ditch. Shaw ditch. And I recommend uh, if you're a learner, just say Shaw ditch. Here you are, or here is something as you're handing it over, right? So let's look at some of the things you can be handing over or you can, uh, you're can you asking about, right? Now, I have actually put in the euro along with them, so sometimes that's put a hitch in and change the sounds, right? Okay. So, your jumper, Yancey is a jumper, Yancey, so the Yancey, so Kahachewol the Yancey, the Yancey, your jumper, Kahachewol the Yancey, where's your jumper, okay, Shodich the Yancey, here's your jumper, okay, the Lenya, the Lenya, right, so that's Lenya is a shirt, Kawal the Lenya, where's your shirt, the longer version, Kahachewol the Lenya, where's your shirt, and then if you want to hand somebody the shirt, Show ditch the lane, yeah. Here's your shirt. Show ditch the lane, yeah. Okay? Here's your shirt. How itch the lane, yeah. Right? The skirt, uh, and that S, uh, SC with an I, a wee slender vowel afterwards, I or a E, will get a sh sound. Like, very like the S in shop, not like the S in um, uh, sale. It's more like a sh, S H. So, skirt, skirt, right? So don't say, even though it sounds a wee bit like the English, don't say the, the way you would say skirt with a soft S in English, skirt. It's really skirt. So, um, kawal de skirt. Where's your skirt? Kawal de skirt. Um, kawal de skirt. Or else, here's your skirt. Shodich, shodich de skirt. Okay? Shodich de skirt. Bristia is trousers, but because of do, it becomes a vr sound, a v sound. B-H with an I. It's going to get v. So in this case you're saying da vrishtja, your trousers. Da vrishtja. Um Kawal da vrishtja, where's your trousers? Kahecha will da vrishtja, where's your trousers? Uh, if your hands are in trousers after you iron iron them or something, shall ditch the vrishtja. Shall ditch the vrishtja. Okay? Here's your trousers, right? <coughs> da vroga, again, uh, BHR will get a sort of uh, a v sound. Da vroga, uh, vr, vr. So Davroga, um the Vroga, where's your shoes? Kahetcha will the Vroga, okay, where's your shoes? Up in Ulster we would sometimes have an I fat at the end of this, we might say Davrogi. Oh Davrogi, you have that option, okay? Uh standard Irish says Davroga ends in an A, okay? Uh another thing that can be quite hard to find in the morning now is them socks. So the stucky, uh, and this dot can't aspirate ST, so the stucky. Um Kahachewol the stucky, where's your socks? Kawal the stucky, where's your socks? Uh, and then if you're handing the socks over, show ditch the stucky, show ditch the stucky. So whenever you're handing the child something, say show ditch, and then give it, give it to the child. Show ditch the stucky. Um, kota, okay, kota, but do chota. Uh, the hitch goes on after the do. Do chota. Kahachewol the chota, where's your coat? Kahachewol the chota, where's your coat? Um, show ditch the chota. Here's your coat. How it's the chota, okay? Um, and then another item that sometimes there's a whole panic about in the morning is a mala scala. Mala scala. Uh, although if you say your school bag, you put a hitch in and it gets a w sound. M with this hitch followed by an, a broad vowel and that's an a o or u is always going to sound like a wee bit like a w, okay? The wala scala. So. Da Walla Skyla, Mala Skyla, school bag, Da Walla Skyla. Okay? So, 
Kawalda Walla Skyla, where's your school bag? Kawalda Walla Skyla. Kawalda Walla Skyla, where's your school bag? Kahatcha Walda Walla Skyla, the longer route for where is. So that's the Walla Skyla, here's your school bag, right? Um, the ed, do for your, Eddy, clothes, sport, sport. Uh, your clothes for sport, in other words, your sportswear. Kawalda Eddy Sport, where's your sports clothes? Cold the Eddie Sport, where's your sports clothes? Um, show that's the Eddie Sport, here's your sports clothes now, look, take them with you, right? Uh, and then if you wanted to say any of these items are are some somewhere, we'll just say here, right? So you can sort of say Ta Da Yanzi and Shaw. Your Yanzi is here. I remember if they go to the grammar lessons, there's your Gansey here. And that's how you say, your jumper is here. So, to the Yansey and Shaw. On Shaw means here. On Shaw. On Shaw. Okay? On Shaw. And the emphasis goes in the second part. To the Yansey and Shaw. Okay? Your Gansey is here. Your jumper is here. To the Yansey and Shaw. To the Lania and Shaw. Your, 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 your shirt is here. To the Vroga and Shaw. Your shoes are here. So you're just making a statement that you have the shoes over here somewhere. So to the hota and show, your coat is here, right? Uh, if you want to say it's downstairs, you're shouting up and they're looking around saying, I can't find my shoes. You can say, to the vroga, he's, he's, uh, is down. He's stare, stare is stairs. He's stare. To the, to the, hota, to, to the vroga, he's stare. Your shoes are downstairs. <coughs> um... Tada Tada Hota he stare, your coat is downstairs. Tada Walla Skyla he stare, your um your school bag is downstairs. Okay? So that's another range of phrases there, right? Uh just to go back to some of the stuff, uh a wee seconds a wee second lesson here on the getting them out of bed, right? I'm just adding uh, a few more things in, right? And I think I've one more slide after this. Yes. Um but I might actually just leave that the next slide because I'm going to do. I'll probably have to do a, uh, a couple of other ones. And actually, I'll leave that there now. We'll 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 put this in as a an, an extra one later. So if you just learn those that batch there of the first ones, uh, and hopefully that will get you and start using it tomorrow morning. Don't be waiting, uh, or waiting till you're fluent or anything. Get upstairs. Uh, get experimenting with the wings. Start saying the stuff and do it every day. Never ever in your life do you have to say to your child again, wake up. You can say muscle. You never have to say to them ever again, get out of bed. You can say, eerie anish, get up now. Or you can say, amachas an yabalyat, get out of the bed with you. Uh, you can use that stuff. And whenever you can do that once, you can say goodbye to ever having to do it in English again. And that's the sort of spirit you need if you really want to sort of break the language habit in the home and introduce Irish into the natural part of the home, okay? So, I'm more out of and I'll see you uh, shortly with the second part of this and some other stuff as well. And send me in things that you just want. Uh, if you go to Fun Follow Me or you search for Shan Moore, I'll put something on the wee video here uh, and send me requests uh, for phrases and things like that and 